Hi folks, Lance from Runtime. Passion, passion for your craft. One of the things that I come across all the time when I'm recruiting for the engineering space, in particular embedded systems, that's what we do in Australia and around the world, we come across engineers that have kind of fallen into the field of engineering and haven't really been impassioned by it. So they fell into it for one reason or another, they did their degrees, they've gone into the workforce, but they're not really in it, if you see what I mean. They're not impassioned by it. Now the thing with going into something and doing it for the wrong reasons is it's not sustainable. And if you're going to build a career on a skill set that you've learned at university and you're not really into it, you are going to do a half-cocked job. You're not, you're not going to be really engaged in the work. You're not going to get a lot of joy out of it. And eventually you're going to get tired of it and maybe exit the industry. So my first tip for engineers out there is find something you love. I know it's a cliche. I know a lot of people have said this, Steve Jobs and other people have said it, you know, find something you love doing and you'll never work a day in your life. But it's absolutely true. My journey as an engineer was very much along those lines. I was always a tinkerer. I used to tinker with little things, take things apart. The classical mindset that you hear from a lot of engineers who've kind of gone along that engineering path and built a career because they were generally interested in solving problems, generally interested in taking things apart and really trying to understand how things work. That is really the essence of an engineering career, that curiosity, that need to understand a problem, and also the tenacity and the grit to see it through to a final conclusion and find a solution. Because I have a motto in life, every problem has a solution, but you just gotta work at it long enough to reach that solution and reach the end goal. A lot of people give up too early. So that's my first tip. If you're out there as an engineer and you're not really enjoying it, maybe that's not right for you. Maybe you need to pivot and do something else. So this is really, really important for you guys to understand. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck in a job and the only thing that you're going to be focused on is the remuneration. That is not going to cut it long term. You really need to find what you love and what you believe in. So this leads me on to how do you stay relevant in the engineering field? You've got to upskill. Things are changing very rapidly. And even in embedded systems development, even though the tool chains evolve slowly, there is change and it's coming. And one of the things that is coming rapidly at us is automation. So you need to upskill. So there's lots of technologies that are coming up and you need to be constantly learning upskilling. And if that means moving jobs, so be it. But be focused on upskilling because by upskilling, you're gonna become more valuable in the marketplace and you're gonna become more relevant and people are gonna to want to employ you because you have relevant skills, current skills that map into the problems of the day, not skills that perhaps are, are becoming old and redundant. So always be upskilling. So what are the kind of trends that are coming up in the technology space? So one of those trends is risk V. Now, you know about Intel, you know about ARM, you know about AMD, these are the classical providers of chips in the world. Risk V is coming to disrupt that space. It's coming rapidly, it's coming quickly. So what is Risk V? Risk V is an open architecture. It's open source hardware basically where you can design your own seat. A lot of companies are jumping on this bandwagon and particularly Eastern companies who have been locked out of perhaps some of the IP in the West, they are really accelerating this path and adopting a lot of the Risk V technology. So be mindful of that. There's lots of boards out there. I have this board on my desk. This is actually this is in the form of a switch, a light switch. Inside here is a RISC-V chip, and I've actually ran code on here. This runs actually Linux on here, even though it's a form of a switch. And you can program it and have the UI on this touch screen to act like a switch. This has a RISC-V processor in here. I myself am experimenting with this stuff because even though we provide a recruitment service, we're very deep into the tech and we want to play with it. Certainly myself, I'm still a geek and an engineer at heart. So that's the curiosity that you need, that spark. That's what you need to maintain as an engineer. It's very important that you maintain that spark. So what are the other technologies that are already in place but are also very, very much needed in the marketplace? Embedded Linux. So Linux, everybody knows about Linux. We use Linux all the time in our servers and I run it locally as well on my home lab. But Linux is on your Android phone, but it's also in a lot of embedded products. Why is that? Any sophisticated embedded system nowadays requires quite a lot of compute and quite a lot of features and complexity. Now you can build that on a standard RTOS or other an open source or a closed source RTOS, but embedded Linux, which is free and there's no licensing for it, has become a prominent operating system for a lot of embedded devices. So I urge those of you that have not played with embedded Linux to get out there, build the kernel from scratch, 
get the source code, build it from scratch, and start tweaking the kernel. So you need to understand about the kernel, the insides of the kernel. You need to be able to customize it by tools like Yocta, where you can compress the kernel size to fit into whatever footprint that you have for your hardware. So customizing the kernel and also looking at the user space of the kernel as well, where the applications sit. So you got the kernel level where you got the device drivers and the actual insides of the kernel you can customize, but you got the user level as well where you write the applications. So you will have jobs out there that require people to be able to write applications on top of the kernel. Use all the APIs of the kernel. Go out and learn about the Linux kernel. It's going to become even more prevalent in the future. And because it's open source, it can be ported to all number of different types of CPUs. And that's what's going to happen in the future. So I urge you to learn about embedded Linux. So what are the other things that are also coming at us very quickly? And we are deploying that ourselves. Now you guys might have heard, I'm sure you have heard about ChatGPT. Now this particular transformer is very powerful. We are deploying it throughout our company to help us be better at what we do for our customers, our clients and candidates, to communicate better with our customers and clients. I urge you all to look at ChatGPT because it's not simply used as a transformer, language transformer. What you can also use it for as an engineer, you can use it to help you write code. And I've used it many times myself to get it to give me fragments of code that I can go and build into my project and get it up and running very quickly. So it's a tool for learning, but it's also a tool for rapid prototyping of any product that you're, build, you're building and you're working on. At least to get it to a level where you can test it and tweak it and then you can add your own secret source to the solution. So I urge you to use those tools. So when it comes to upskilling, one of the other big, big skills that you need to really be mindful of is machine learning. Machine learning is coming fast and hard at every sector of technology. It's disrupting so many areas and it's going to disrupt embedded. So machine learning at the edge is very, very important. That is basically training a model in the cloud and then deploying that model on a small microcontroller to do a very specific task. It could be um, object detection, it could be sound detection, whatever it is, it's a very specific thing that you want to sense. It's not only for sensors, but you train that model in the cloud and deploy it on your embedded device. So learn about machine learning at the edge. There's many things to learn about machine learning at the edge. So what I've described in the way of a small use case, that's just one area. The other area is more obviously computer vision, that's a machine learning application as well. So there are more sophisticated applications of edge computing, but learn about edge computing and how that's going to disrupt embedded systems as well. So what kind of skills are in demand right now? That's another question that comes out. Certainly in the embedded space, I can, I can give you some indications of what kind of skills are in high demand. Of course, bare metal programming. Bare metal programming is absolutely essential for a embedded engineer. If you cannot write C or assembler, you are really not in a very good position to be able to really work with an embedded system, particularly when you're debugging. When you're debugging, you need to go down to the assembler level, even down to the machine code level to be able to figure the problem out. So if you haven't done that, please play with that. Don't just be a high level object oriented language programmer because that's not going to cut it in embedded systems. You need to be able to program in bare metal. So no RTOS, just programming in scene assembler. So another language that has emerged and is still up and coming where the, the jury's still out and I'm still mm, not, not sure how well this is going to go, but it's definitely finding its way into the kernel, the Linux kernel for a start, with the device drivers, and that's mostly for security and memory protection, is Rust. Now, Rust is an emerging language. It's, it's got a huge community behind it, and it's eventually going to find its way into the embedded space, particularly if it's already found its way into Linux. That will mean that it's going to find its way into embedded systems products that people are going to build. So I urge you to learn the language, certainly know about it, play with it. It's very similar to C++ in a lot of ways. Maybe the syntax is a little bit difficult to learn, but it's worth playing with. And I urge you guys to play with it, run it up and see how you go with that. So of course, C++ has been around a long time and it's definitely used in embedded systems. Certainly for building sophisticated systems, you need to learn about C++. Now C++, I think it's C++ 18, 19, or 20, I don't even know if it's at 20, but there's a lot of different changes from the original C++ to where we are today. There's a, a lot of multitasking built into C++, and there's lots of other features 
in the, in the more modern versions of C++ that you need to be aware of, particularly concurrency and multi-threading, particularly in a world where it's all multi-core these days. So you need to be able to understand multi-core, multi-threading in that sort of environment. But also for embedded systems, not just for desktops and servers, embedded systems are becoming multi-core as well. So learning about multi-threading and multitasking within the language, because C++ lends itself to multitasking and multi-threading, you should be learning all about that. So the other thing that embedded engineers need to be aware of are graphical user interfaces. Now, a lot of devices, embedded devices, have touch screens on them. So there's a requirement for embedded systems engineers to know about how to build those kinds of interfaces. Learning about graphics libraries, be that open source or closed source. So Qt or some of the other open source libraries that are available out there, there's plenty of them that you can use to build GUIs basically for your embedded system. I've actually built a lot of them myself. They're not that difficult. You have an editor. You're not expected to be a graphic designer. You should be able to take graphic assets and use some sort of an editor to build a rudimentary interface. So learn about that side of embedded systems as well. It's very important. If you have that skill, again, it's going to make you more valuable in the market. So analytics. Now, analytics is so, so important nowadays because every single device that's coming out as an embedded device has some sort of connectivity. Bluetooth, wireless, like Zigbee, or some other low-energy, low-power radio system for long range. So you need to be able to understand what the data collection part of an embedded system is. Where does the data end up? It ends up in the cloud on some server. So you need to understand the connectivity, the cloud side of an embedded system to the cloud. That is very important. So learn about you know, all the server side as well as the embedded side and how the APIs talk to one another. It may be on AWS, it may be on Azura, it may be on a proprietary cloud server system, but you need to understand about analytics and data collection. So I mentioned embedded Linux. So embedded Linux is only one offering. Embedded Linux is designed for more complex embedded systems. So there's plenty of use cases where that's a, a bit of an overkill and you need to resort to either to bare metal or to an RTOS. Now there's plenty of RTOSs out there and I'm sure some of you, I'm sure all of you have, have, have played with them. You know, free RTOS, RT Threaded, NutX come to mind. There's a, a whole swag of these open source RTOSs out there. But it's also closed source uh, RTOSs out there for more mission critical systems that you may be using. Whatever RTOS you're using, Make sure you understand how the RTOS works, how to initialize the RTOS, how to create the tasks, what the inter-task communication is, how interrupts are handled. You need to go deep into the RTOS and understand it deeply. So if you have that kind of skill as well, it's going to make you very valuable in the marketplace. In the age of internet and AI, security is absolutely key to building embedded systems. It's no longer an add-on. It's an absolute essential that's built in at the design phase of the project. You must build in security. Now that security might be at the chip level or it may be at the firmware level. Whatever level is at, it could be both. You need to understand how does security come into the design of your operating system. Learn about security. Learn about how you will build the firmware to incorporate security so that hacks are minimized or reduced completely. So learn about security. Again, this will make you more relevant and more valuable in the marketplace. So debugging is another big area. We do it all the time. As embedded engineers, you've got to debug your firmware. You've got to debug your hardware. But you need to really pay attention to what tools are available. The toolkit for debugging is also evolving. There's automatic test. There's also remote debugging. So debugging itself, there's many ways that you can debug a system. You need to understand more than one way that you've been used to. Don't, not just using like printfs, you need to understand about insert emulators, JTAGs, oscilloscopes, logic analyzers. So that's the hardware debugging part of it, but the firmware side as well. Things like catching errors in the code, you know, memory errors, um, you know, array out of bound errors, that could be built into the language that you select, it could be trace tools that you're using, or code verification tools that you're using. Whatever tools that you're using at the firmware and the software level as well as the hardware, you need to be aware of those those things about debugging and testing your software and your hardware. If you know those things deeply, again, you're going to become more valuable and more relevant as time goes on. 
in the marketplace. So what, what's hot right now as far as the industry is concerned, as far as the kinds of domains that you should be looking to, to find work in? Well, robotics is huge. And now there's a huge number of companies who have jumped on this bandwagon of robotics and automation and autonomy as well. So we know about electric cars. That's another area to get into electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles. This is a huge area and there's a lot of investment going into these kinds of companies. So if you can find yourself one of these companies to work for, that's a, definitely a bonus and you'll be at the cutting edge of tech. So the other hot areas to also focus on is medical devices. Lots of research going on in medical devices and lots of deployment of embedded systems technology in medical devices. So remember, you've got to link all of these industries to your passion. Some people might be interested in cars, some people may be interested in rockets, some people may be interested in medical devices, some people may be interested in industrial automation. So IoT is a big thing to get into when it comes to industrial automation. Lots to look forward to, lots happening in this landscape. So I urge you all to go out, learn, 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 apply, 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 and you will not be left behind and you will remain relevant and desirable as an engineer in the market. And you will also enjoy the journey. Good luck with everything, and I wish you the very, very best. If you wanna connect with me, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Just look for my name, Lance Harvey, and you'll, you'll find me. If you wanna email me, that's lance at runtimerec.com. And what we do here is we help companies find great engineers and help great engineers find great engineering positions. Wish you all the best, and catch you in the next one. Cheers.